हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस आवर सब्जेक्ट थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन फॉर द कोल इंडिया लिमिटेड पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी विल ओनली कवर द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट बेसिक थ्योरी ऑफ द थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द काइनामेटिक लिंक काइनामेटिक लिंक इज दैट एवरी पार्ट ऑफ ए मशीन इज हैविंग सम रिलेटिव मोशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सम अदर पार्ट राइट इफ देर आर एन नंबर देर आर टू काइनामेटिक लिंक इन ए मशीन देन दीज काइनामेटिक लिंक विल हैव सम रिलेटिव मोशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ईच अदर देन दैट लिंक इज नोन एज काइनामेटिक लिंक एंड फॉर द काइनामेटिक लिंक द बॉडी मस्ट बी ए रेजिस्टेंट बॉडी रेजिस्टेंट बॉडी मीन्स दैट देर शुड नॉट बी एनी डिफॉर्मेशन ऑन द बॉडी एंड द कंप्लीट फोर्स और यू कैन से कंप्लीट पावर इज ट्रांसमिटेड फ्रॉम वन बॉडी टू द अदर बॉडी दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ रेजिस्टेंट बॉडी देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ लिंक प्रेजेंट वन इज द रिजिड लिंक वन इज द रिजिड लिंक रिजिड लिंक मीन्स दैट द डिफॉर्मेशन आर नेग्लिजिबल फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूर पिस्टन कनेक्टिंग रोड क्रैंक ऑल दीज आर द रिजिड लिंक्स right next is the flexible link flexible links means the deformation is there but that deformation is within the permissible limit just that for example if we can take that belt drive in that belt drive that belt is a link which is a flexible link but the flexibility or the deformation in that belt is in within permissible limit next is the fluid link when the fluid is used to you are transmit power from one body to the other body that is the fluid link now let us see what is the types of relative motion between the links there are three types of relative motions first one is the completely constrained motion completely constrained motion means that the system is constrained itself and there is always one relative motion irrespective of the force right in that relative motion when the relative motion is completely constrained you will get only a specific input one relative motion you will get irrespective of the input aap koi bhi load lagao kisi bhi direction mein kaisa bhi aap load lagayenge but you will get a specific output then that motion is known as completely constrained motion next is the successfully constrained motion in that successfully constrained motion the relative motion between the two links is constrained to a particular motion with the help of surrounding right you will constrain that motion of that link to a particular direction the motion may be aapka jo link hai mechanism mein it will be able to give you two different relative motions suppose sliding and rotating it will be able to give but with the help of some surrounding with the help of some forceful for forceful action we will constrain that in output in one direction sirf ek particular motion ko hum usko allow karte hain and all the other relative motions are arrested then that is known as successfully constrained motion for example shaft in the footstep bearing right in this shaft in the footstep bearing we will we are constrained one motion and only one motion is allowed next is the incompletely constrained motion incomplete constrained motion means that the output will vary right if you change the force you will get different relative motions so that is the known meaning of incompletely constrained motion so for any kinematic pair or for any your that uh, kinematic chain or any mechanism or you can say any machine we only want that either the motion is completely constrained or the successfully constrained we don't want the motion to be the you are in unsuccessful constrained motion because in any mechanism or in any machine we only want a particular type of output right we want ki ye machine sirf aapko aapko rotation de ya sliding de ya kuch bhi कोई भी एक मोशन हम हमारे रिक्वायरमेंट है सो वी ओनली वांट आइदर सक्सेसफुली कंस्ट्रेंड मोशन और कंप्लीटली कंस्ट्रेंड मोशन राइट नेक्स्ट इज योर काइनामेटिक पेयर काइनामेटिक पेयर मींस दैट द कनेक्शन बिटवीन द टू लिंक्स इफ दैट देयर इज टू लिंक्स देन द कनेक्शन बिटवीन दैट टू लिंक्स इज कॉल्ड एज ए जॉइंट एंड दैट जॉइंट इज ए काइनामेटिक पेयर ओनली व्हेन द रिलेटिव मोशन बिटवीन द लिंक्स इज ए कंस्ट्रेंड मोशन आपके जो दो लिंक्स एक दूसरे से कनेक्टेड होंगे उसको बोलते हैं जॉइंट उस उस जॉइंट को हम काइनामेटिक पेयर कब बोलेंगे इफ दैट मोशन इज द कंप्लीटली कंस्ट्रेंड और सक्सेसफुली कंस्ट्रेंड मोशन राइट देन ओनली वी कैन से दैट इट इज ए काइनामेटिक पेयर एंड देर आर अ क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ काइनामेटिक पेयर फर्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलेटिव मोशन 
राइट सो फर्स्ट पेयर इज योर स्लाइडिंग और प्रिजमेटिक पेयर स्लाइडिंग और प्रिजमेटिक पेयर मीन्स द रिलेटिव मोशन इज प्योर स्लाइडिंग राइट योर लिंक इज स्लाइडिंग ओवर अदर लिंक सो इट इज अ स्लाइडिंग पेयर नेक्स्ट इज अ टर्निंग और रिवोल्यूट पेयर इन द टर्निंग और रिवोल्यूट पेयर द मोशन इज प्योर टर्निंग लाइक राइट लाइक योर हिंज ज्वाइंट्स राइट देर आर टर्निंग एंड और रिवोल्यूट पेयर नेक्स्ट इज अ रोलिंग पेयर इन द रोलिंग पेयर द मोशन इज योर प्योर रोलिंग नेक्स्ट इज अ स्क्रू पेयर स्क्रू पेयर जस्ट लाइक योर नट एंड बोल्ट इन नट एंड बोल्ट यू विल से दैट सर इन नट एंड बोल्ट वी हैव टू मोशन वन इज द रोटेशन वन इज द स्लाइडिंग बट इफ वी से दैट द इफ आई गिव द रोटेशन टू द बोल्ट देन स्लाइडिंग इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द रोटेशन सो आउट ऑफ दिस स्लाइडिंग एंड रोटेशन इन द नट एंड बोल्ट ओनली वन इज इनडिपेंडेंट एंड वन मोशन इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द अदर सो इट इज ऑल्सो ए काइनामेटिक पेयर नेक्स्ट इज योर स्पेरिकल पेयर स्पेरिकल पेयर मीन्स वेन द मोशन इज इन थ्री डी जस्ट लाइक यूर बॉल एंड सॉकेट ज्वाइंट राइट नेक्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टाइप ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट type of contact between the pairs or between the links first one is the lower pair lower pair is your surface contact when two links are contact are in contact with surface to surface then that is known as lower pair next is your higher pair higher pair means either point or line contact if i can say this marker is in line contact with this hand so it is a higher pair next is your wrapping pair wrapping pair just like your belt and uh, pulley drive so in that drive belt is wrapped around the pulley and wrapping pair can be say that it is very close to the higher pair and you know that one higher pair is equal to two lower pairs if we say that on the basis of lower pair or higher pair you can say that sliding pair is lower pair right sliding pair is lower pair because surface contact turning pair is also a lower pair rolling pair rolling pair is a higher pair because in that only one line contact is there so we can say that it is a your higher pair and if we can say about your screw pair screw pair is also a lower pair why lower pair only because surface contact is there and spherical pair is also a lower pair right because that ball is in contact complete ball is surface of the ball is in contact with the socket so it is a lower pair only rolling pair is a higher pair next classification of kinematic pairs is on the basis of closer right first one is the self closed pair self closed pair means the pairs are in contact are in permanent contact with each other two links are contact with each other in permanently just like your piston and cylinder right piston and cylinder arrangement are the your uh, self closed pair or the permanent contact next is a forced closed pair in that forced closed pair because of some force the pairs are in contact just like for example cam and follower in that cam and follower that cam is in force contact with the that follower is in force contact with the cam because of the gravity or some spring is attached over the follower so because of some force it is in contact with the cam and other example is your automatic door closer that door closer is a kind is a example of force close pair automatic clutch mechanism it is also a example of force close pair so this is the classification of kinematic pair now we will just see what is the inversion of four bar mechanism you may get a uh, direct theory question on this right inversion inversion is if there are n if there are l l number of links in the your uh, mechanism kisi bhi mechanism ke andar if you have l number of links then your inversion will be less than or equal to l right inversion kaise milte hain how you will get the inversion you will get the inversion inversion you will get when you start fixing different different links right if you fix one link you will get one type of mechanism if you fix another link you will get another type of mechanism so these types of mechanisms are known as inversions so if i say about four bar mechanism in that four bar mechanism we have three types of inversion one is the double crank double crank means your your input and output will be in complete rotation our input link and output link will be in complete rotation for example coupling rod of locomotive it is a double crank inversion next is your crank and rocker input is your 
in rotation complete rotation but output is in partial rotation it is in this partial rotation for example your beam engine and double rocker means both input and output link is in partial rotation an example of the double crank uh, double rocker inversion is your watts indicator now if we talk about inversion of single slider mechanism in the single slider mechanism you have four links cylinder connecting rod crank and slider right you have four different links if i start fixing one link then i'll get a different mechanism so if i fix the cylinder i'll get either engine your compressor if i fix the connecting rod connecting rod of the single slider mechanism we'll get two different types of inversion one is the crank and slotted quick return motion mechanism and another one is the oscillating cylinder engine if you fix the crank you will get rotary ic engine or ganom ic engine right rotary ic engine you will get and other one is the whitworth quick return motion mechanism if you fix the crank and if you fix the slider if you fix the slider you will get hand pump or you can say pendulum pump or also known as bull engine so these are the inversions of the single slider mechanism if we talk about inversion of the double slider mechanism so in double slider mechanism if i fix the slotted plate slotted plate then i'll get elliptical tremel if i fix the slider slider of the double slider any slider if i fix then we'll get scotch and york mechanism and if i fix the connecting link connecting link which is connecting the two sliders if i fix it we'll get the old ham coupling right so these are the different types of inversion of four bar mechanism single slider and double slider you may get a direct question on this as a your objective type question so you must remember all these type of inversion now let us discuss some theoretical about your gears you know that gears are the device which used to transmit the power from one shaft to the another shaft let us see what is the classification of gears the classification of gears is on the basis of shaft connected right if the both of the axis both of the shaft axis are parallel and you want to transmit power from one shaft to the other shaft then we have to use the spur gears spur gear are used to transmit power or motion from one shaft to other shaft whose axis are parallel so spur gears in the spur gears your teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of rotation aapke jo teeth honge wo straight honge and parallel to the axis of rotation honge so in that case we can say that axial thrust generated in those gears will be zero there should not be any axial thrust but one disadvantage is there that because the teeth are straight so there is a sudden engagement and disengagement teeth ke beech mein ekdam se sudden engagement or disengagement hoga so because of that sudden engagement and disengagement the impact load acting is very high and those those gears will have a very good chance to fail because of this very high impact load so to minimize this impact load we will change this spur gear into helical gears helical gears are also used to transmit power between two parallel shaft in that case your teeth are straight still teeth are straight but now they are inclined to the axis of rotation now they are inclined so there is no sudden engagement and disengagement there is gradual engagement and disengagement so that there should not be any impact load but in helical gears that axial thrust is not equal to zero there must be some axial thrust generated in the gears so it is not equal to zero so to minimize this axial thrust we will use this double helical gears in double helical gears in one gear both right hand and left handed helicals will be there and there is a gear known as herring bone gear herring bone gear is also a type of double helical gear in which there is no tool run out and this is an ideal helical gear right so if you want to say that the double helical gears will look like this if i draw here that herring bone let us say this is one gear so in that herring bone gears will be like this both left hand and right hand gears will be there and there should not be any tool run out this is the herring bone gear but if you want to say that what is the helical gear now double helical gears 
in double helical gears one tool run out is there there is some spacing between the helicals there is some spacing between the helicals to move the tool right jab aap is gear ko manufacture karenge to tool ko move karne ke liye kuch ek tool run out diya jata hai this is known as the tool run out so in herring bone gear no tool run out is there and second is when both the axes are intersecting jab do axes aapke intersect karenge and you have to transmit the power from one axis to the other axis then we have to use this bevel gear bevel gears are used when your axes are intersecting and bevel gear are also the type straight bevel gear or inclined bevel gear in which the teeth are straight or inclined there is a special type of bevel gear known as mitre gear in which the mitre gears are used to connect two perpendicular shafts if you want to connect two perpendicular shafts then you have to use this mitre gears so this is a special kind of bevel gear if the axes are neither intersecting nor parallel like this right they are not parallel and neither intersecting so if you want to transmit the power between these two then we have to use either your hyperboloid or spiral gears right if there is that axes are neither perpend no, neither parallel or intersecting we can say that pure rolling motion is not feasible so we will get your rotation with sliding and that too with the help of these spiral gears there is a type of worm and worm wheel worm and worm wheel are used to transmit the power between your axes in which which are neither parallel nor intersecting but the major advantage of using worm and worm wheel are that if you want a very high speed reduction that if you want the very high speed reduction let us say up to 10000 or sorry up to 1000 is to 1 right if one gear is of if of 1000 rpm and you want it to reduce to 1 rpm then this type of gear worm and worm wheel is useful it is the only gear which will give you the very high speed reduction ratio up to 1000 is to 1 this is the major advantage of using worm and worm wheel in the worm and worm wheel always this worm worm is always a driver and worm wheel is always a driven gear you cannot make worm wheel as a driver at any time worm is always a driver and in this worm the high spiral angle is there the angle between the teeth are very high high spiral angle is there and in worm wheel you have low spiral angle right there are also the classification of gears like external and internal gearing you know external and internal gearing if the teeth are external to the surface external to that disc then they are the external gearing and in external gearing the direction of rotation is is opposite if it is rotating clockwise then it is rotating anti clockwise and internal gearing if the gears are inside andar ki taraf agar gears ke teeth hain then there is a internal gearing so in in internal gearing the direction of rotation is same right if one gear rotates clockwise then the its mating gear will always rotate clockwise next is the law of gearing you know that law of gearing we already studied and law of gearing to satisfy the law of gearing we have we must have a conjugate profiles we say that that all the gears all the mating gear should always satisfy the law of gearing and the profile which satisfy the law of gearing is known as conjugate profiles and there are two profiles two conjugate profiles one is involute and one is cycloid let us discuss one by one what is a involute profile how you will get involute profile involute profile is a locus of a point on a line which rolls without sleeping on a circle अगर एक एक लाइन है आपके पास लेटस से दिस इज अ सर्कल इसके ऊपर आपने एक लाइन रखा लेटस से दिस लाइन तो इसके ऊपर कोई एक पॉइंट है दिस पॉइंट इफ दिस लाइन इज रोलिंग ऑन दिस सर्कल इफ दिस लाइन इज रोलिंग ऑन दिस सर्कल विदाउट स्लीपिंग देन द लॉकस ऑफ दिस पॉइंट विल गिव यू द इनवॉल्यूट प्रोफाइल राइट लेट अस डिस्कस व्हाट इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ इनवॉल्यूट प्रोफाइल देयर आर सम एडवांटेज ऑफ इनवॉल्यूट प्रोफाइल फर्स्ट वन इज if you varying the center distance let us say these two are the shafts and you want to transmit power from this shaft to this shaft this is the center distance between them because of some vibrations vibrations is always there that their center distance will will keep on changing inka jo center distance hai wo vary hota rahega so the major disadvantage of your 
मेजर एडवांटेज ऑफ योर इनवॉल्यूट प्रोफाइल इज इफ द सेंटर डिस्टेंस इज वेरिंग विद इन द परमिसिबल लिमिट देन योर स्पीड रेशियो इज कॉन्स्टेंट राइट भाई हम गियर यूज क्यों करते हैं बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट ए कॉन्स्टेंट स्पीड रेशियो वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट आपका जो स्पीड रेशियो है वो वेरी करे दैट्स वाई वी आर यूजिंग गियर्स राइट सो To maintain that speed ratio, the major advantage of involute profile is कि ये सिर्फ center distance है जिसका variation को आप रोक नहीं सकते This vibration can never be zero. तो अगर ये center distance change होता रहेगा तो we say that we want कि center distance को हम change नहीं हम रोक नहीं सकते इसका ये variation, but we always want a constant speed ratio that is only possible in the involute profile. Right? In the cycloidal profile, if you vary the center distance, the speed ratio will change. and in involute profile the pressure angle is constant throughout the engagement right from the starting to the end of the engagement the pressure angle is constant but it is not the case with the your cycloidal profile in cycloidal profile your pressure angle will vary from maximum value to zero then to maximum at the start of the engagement the pressure angle is maximum it will decrease decrease and when the point of contact is at pitch point then the pressure angle is zero and from your pitch point it, it will start increasing and when the your that uh, end of the engagement it is again maximum so it will vary in the cycloidal profile but there are some advantage of cycloidal profile also in the cycloidal profile the flanks are of wider the the flank of the tooth is wider so if it is wider then we can say that the cycloidal profile is a strong strong gear for the same pitch if you want if you have two gears of same pitch one is of involute one is of cycloidal then cycloidal gear is a strong gear and in cycloidal gear there is a concave convex contact there is a concave convex contact one gear is concave one gear is convex so in that there is very less wear but in involute your concave concave contact is there so more wear is there in the involute rather than cycloidal and the major major advantage of cycloidal is there is no interface no interference at all in cycloidal profile interference is not possible because if i say that because in the cycloidal profile the profile above the base circle and below the base circle both are conjugate but in involute the profile above the base circle is conjugate but below the base circle is not conjugate so if if a, if the teeth is touch or the point of contact is below the base circle then interference will occur in involute but in cycloidal the point of contact will be anywhere there should not be any chance of interference at all this is the major advantage of the cycloidal profile now we have some methods to avoid interference in the involute profile first one is if we undercut the gears if we cut the gears right where the uh, at the your root or the your near the base circle if i undercut the gear but the advantage of uh, disadvantage of this is that because of this undercut the strength will be less that gear strength will be less because you know that if you design the gear gear will be designed on the basis of a cantilever beam and it is more prone to failure to for, at its root so if you decrease the <coughs> if you cut the material at the root then its strength will be less that's why undercut gear is used for low power transmission you cannot use it for high power transmission the second is to increase the pressure angle right if i increase the pressure angle then the radius of base circle will decrease if the radius of base circle will decrease then those m and n points you remember those m and n points will be wo thoda aur increase ho jayega the distance of m and n will increase so in, the chances of interference will decrease but there is a limitation of increase of uh, pressure angle that your force transmission force you know that the transmission force will be equal to f cos phi so if you increase the phi then this ft will decrease so less power is transmitted so it is a uh, a you can say a limitation on the increase of pressure angle so you cannot increase the pressure angle beyond 20 degree maximum is 20 degree you can increase next is a stubbing of tooth stubbing of tooth means we will cut the top layer top layer of the gear but the major disadvantage of stubbing of tooth is if you 
if you cut the top layer then addendum will decrease radius of addendum will decrease interference will decrease but the major problem is with the contact ratio the major problem is with the contact ratio that if you decrease the if you decrease the addendum circle then contact ratio will also decrease and there is a limit of contact limitation on the contact ratio that contact contact ratio must always be greater than 1 right so if there is a case that if you stub the teeth then contact ratio is less than 1 then you are uh, that no use of gear because if some of the time there is no prayer, no power transmission so there is a limitation of contact ratio on stubbing of tooth the best way to avoid interference is by increasing the number of tooth you can increase the number of tooth by increasing the number of tooth of the same pitch circle then addendum will decrease addendum decrease karega then interference chance will decrease but and also one advantage is there because of increase of number of teeth your phi is not changed phi will remain same and major advantage is that your contact ratio will increase if you increase the number of teeth then contact ratio will increase so there is no limitation on this so the best way to avoid interference is by increasing the number of teeth now let us see what is the cycloidal profile this is an involute cycloidal profile is cycloidal profile is a locus of a point on a circumference of a circle ek koi circle hai uske upar ek point hai when this circle is rolling without sleeping on a fixed line agar wo circle ek fixed line ke upar roll karega to uske us circumference pe jo ek point hai uska locus is cycloidal profile let us say this is a cycloidal profile this is a base circle iske niche wale part ko this ko bolte hain flank this is face this upper wala this profile is known as epicycloidal profile this the flank ka profile is known as hypocycloidal profile ye question aa sakta hai direct theek hai and you can you say that the pressure angle in the cycloidal profile is maximum at the start and end of engagement and that is at the point k and l in our earlier diagram and phi will be zero at pitch point right pressure angle will be zero at pitch point so this is the theory of your gears which will be useful in your that call india limited exam now let us discuss the chapter cams so cam is a rotating element which gives reciprocation to the follower and cam is used in various machines right like your ic engine cam is using so let us discuss the classification of followers the first one is the knife edge follower in which the contacting end to the cam has a sharp edge knife right so it is a uh, knife edge follower jiske andar aapka jo contact end hoga jo ki aapka cam ke sath contact mein hoga that is a sharp knife edge and the motion between the cam and follower is a pure sliding motion this motion is a pure sliding because of this pointed edge there is more wear and tear to the cam and as well as your follower and the major disadvantage of using knife edge follower is that there is a more side thrust between the follower and the guide right follower is reciprocating in a guide so in that guide there is a side thrust exerted because of this and this is a major disadvantage next is your we can say roller follower in the roller follower the contacting end of a follower is roller right in the end of the follower a roller is attached which is under pure rolling with the cam so the your motion is a rolling motion and because of that rolling motion the wear is very less very less wear and tear is there but still your side thrust is still acting on the follower and device or on the guide right follower or guide ke beech mein side thrust abhi bhi lagega next is your flat faced or mushroom follower in which the follower has a flat face and contacting end is a perfectly flat face and the advantage is that very less side thrust is there and that side thrust is basically because of friction so but the disadvantage of using flat face follower is because it is a flat face so you have a very high surface stress surface stress on the follower is very high so to minimize this surface stress we are using this spherical faced we make this flat face into spherical face so in the spherical face the surface stress will be less so this is the uh, types of your followers 
Now let us discuss the terms used in radial cams. What are the various terms? First one is the base circle. Base circle is the smallest circle on the cam profile. Right. On the cam profile, jo aap center of cam se, jo aap ek smallest circle draw kar sakte hai, that is the base circle. And if you define the size of the cam, so size of the cam will be defined with the help of base circle only. Next is the trace point. The so trace point is the, the point on follower which is required to trace. There are some points on the follower. If you talk about knife edge, then that edge point is the trace point. If you discuss about the roller follower, so the center of the roller is the trace point. So trace point is that point on the follower which is required to trace. Next is the pitch curve. Pitch curve is the curve traced by the trace point by holding the cam stationary and moving the follower. We hold the cam stationary and move the follower along its profile. So the curve, curve joining the trace point is your pitch curve, right? So next is your prime circle. Prime circle is the minimum radius circle of pitch curve from the center of cam. Center of cam se jo minimum circle banega, minimum radius ka circle banega, aapke pitch curve pe, that is the prime circle. Next is the pressure angle. Pressure angle is the angle between the line of motion of follower. Follower jis line mein aapka move kar raha hai and common normal at point of contact on pitch curve. Pitch curve ke upar point of contact jo hoga, uska common normal or line of action of uh, your follower ke beech ke jo angle hota hai, that is your pressure angle. Next is the pitch point. Pitch point is point on which on pitch curve. Is pitch curve ke upar wo point jahan, ke, jahan pe aapka pressure angle is maximum. That is the pitch point. Then pitch circle. Pitch circle is the pitch circle is drawn from the center of cam. Center of cam se aap draw karenge pitch circle. Having radius equal to the distance between center of cam and this pitch point. Pitch point or center of cam ke beech ka jo distance hoga usko radius maan ke ek circle draw karenge that is the pitch circle. So these are the various terminal, uh, terminologies used in the radial cams. Now let us discuss the follower motion. Jab aapka follower motion mein hai. Let us say x is the follower displacement. Jo follower aapka displace kar let us say x. Theta is the angle of rotation, cam rotation. Omega is the angular velocity of cam, right? So you know that omega will be equal to d theta by dt. And let us say s is the stroke length. Stroke length is the s that maximum distance your follower is uh, traveling. That is the stroke length. And so this stroke length is the x max, right? Maximum displacement is your stroke length. T naught is the time of outstroke, right? Cam ko, uh, so follower ko ek outstroke mein jane ke liye kitna time laga let us say t naught and theta naught is the outstroke angle for that outstroke motion for that forward motion and cam ne kitna angle rotate kya that is theta naught so you can say t naught will be equal to theta naught upon omega right omega is the angular velocity of cam let us say tr is the time of return stroke right aapka jo return stroke ka jo time hai let us say tr or return stroke ke during return stroke the angle is theta r so I can write TR is equal to theta R upon W. And let us say V is the velocity of follower. Follower ka jo velocity hai, that is V. So mean velocity during the outstroke, mean velocity kitna hoga? Vaisa to aapka velocity vary karega. Right, velocity will vary. But mean velocity will be equal to your displacement upon time S upon T naught. That is omega S upon theta naught. And the mean velocity during return stroke will be omega s upon theta r, right? Omega, this is s upon tr, so omega s upon theta r. These are the mean velocities in the outstroke and the return stroke. Now let us see the various uh, that uh, velocity motions or various motions of the follower. There are four basic follower motions. First is the uniform velocity motion when the follower is moving with uniform velocity. So this type of motion is used for the low speed cam. If the velocity is uniform, so then V naught that is the outstroke velocity. Outstroke velocity will be uniform. That means the maximum velocity, minimum velocity or mean velocity will be the same. That is omega s upon, th naught, uh, upon theta naught. We already see that. 
and return velocity is also same maximum is equal to minimum is equal to mean because velocity is uniform in that so is it will be omega s upon theta r right theta r and theta naught are the angles rotated by the cam during the outward stroke and return stroke next second one is the uniform acceleration and retardation if the uh, the acceleration and retardation is uniform so in that case the velocity profile is linear and the displacement is there parabolic so in that case the maximum velocity outward maximum velocity will be equal to 2 times the mean velocity that is 2 omega s upon theta naught and your maximum acceleration will be v naught max upon t naught by 2 right if you see the graph then you will realize that maximum acceleration will be at the t naught by 2 so this is t naught by 2 so it will be your 4 omega square s upon theta naught square and similarly ar max will be 4 omega square s upon theta r square aapko ye maximum wale values yaad rakhne question aayega to direct aapko ye maximum values puchhega maximum values yaad rakhenge next is if the follower is using your simple harmonic motion and it is this is used for the medium speed cams so in that case v naught that is the outward stroke velocity at any theta will be equal to pi omega s upon 2 theta naught into sine of pi theta upon theta naught right this is at any theta so the maximum is at when theta is equal to theta naught by 2 so the maximum velocity formula will be pi omega s upon 2 theta naught right if you want to v r max then pi omega s upon 2 theta r so you have to learn this formula then your acceleration acceleration will be the differentiation of velocity that is dv by d theta naught into d theta naught upon dt if you differentiate it you will get this formula so right right pi omega square as s upon 2 theta naught square into cos the, pi theta upon theta naught and jerk if you want to find what is a jerk jerk is the differentiation of acceleration so this is d uh, differentiation of a naught with respect to theta naught into d theta naught upon dt this is your simple harmonic motion and the last one is your cycloidal motion if the follower is following the cycloidal motion then it is used for high speed cam so in that case your displacement at any theta will be x naught will be equal to your s that is a stroke length into theta by theta naught minus 1 upon 2 pi sine 2 pi theta upon theta naught velocity is the differentiation of your displacement and maximum velocity will be 2 omega s upon theta naught you have to learn this 2 omega s upon theta naught at theta is equal to theta naught by 2 and acceleration will be the differentiation of velocity so the maximum acceleration will be 2 pi omega square s upon theta naught square at theta is equal to theta naught by 4 you have to learn these aapko ye yaad rakhna aap derive nahi kar sakte your maximum acceleration maximum velocity formulas right this is the maximum velocity formulas you have to learn this diye wale formula aapko yaad hone chahiye right there is no time to derive it in the question so this is the cam and cam may it say other kuch nahi aega either in your gate or in your coal india limited so this is all about your cam